<laughs> um, so today we're going to be talking about Bacopa or Bacopa mor Mornera. We're going to call that Mornera. Mornerii. Um, sometimes it's their spelling it M O N N I E R I. M O N N. M O N N I E R I. Okay. So this is Barami. This is actually the traditional historical name, Barami. Why this? I didn't think we were using this name for it because officially. Remember, every herb has an official legal name. So if this is on here, about rose follows code. So I guess we're calling it a Brahmi now. So Brahmi, that would be like a legendary name, right? That would be like calling something universal consciousness plant, right? So, so it, it, that's pretty high esteem. Um, so Brahmi is the historical name. The problem is a lot of herbs are called Brahmi. So this would be the official Brahmi. Um, so we've got Tricola is sometimes called Brahmi because it's used so much for the mine. It has very similar uses as Bacopa, but we're gonna call the Bacopa for class. I guess we could call it Brahmi. Okay. So this is a pretty older, this is a very, well documented, you know, 3,000 years of documentation for this plant, all the way back to the original Vedic writings. So it's been used for a really, really, really long period of time. Um, I still call it Bacopa. Most companies still call it Bacopa, but I don't know, maybe this is changing. Maybe we're gonna call it wrong, you know? So its energy is cold. <laughs> It's somewhat moisture rising, so we don't have to worry about it being drying. Its directionality is downward or grounding. This is clearly written about like extensively since ancient times. From an Ayurvedic perspective, it balances kapha, vata, and pitta, meaning it's good for everybody, all types, all body types. As of right now, it has no known drug interactions that we know of. So it's also making it extremely safe. The uh, <laughs> tissue state is clearly tension. This is for tension. Tension in the, especially the mind and the nervous system. Okay. So. Action-wise, the actions that this has that we'll talk about is it's nervine, it's nerve restorative, it's a brain tonic, it's an antispasmodic, an anticonvulsive, and also a longevity herb, one of our main longevity herbs from the Vedic tradition. Its chemistry is pretty well studied. We have steroidal glycoside A and D. These are some of the more research compounds in it. This is the one that a lot of companies use as a marker to identify the plant chemically. Um, and then we have the alkaloid bromine. You see how all these chemicals got their name, right? Because of where they derive from. So a lot of phytochemistry is kind of common sense. If, if you know the Latin name of plants, the Akhman will tell you where a lot of these compounds come from. Remember, we have just hundreds of thousands of natural compounds on the planet. A lot of them only occur in each plant. 
So not every plant has the phacrocyte A and B, right? This is like very uncommon. So this is chemically how we can also identify plants if we don't know how to do that botanically. Okay. Okay. So it has other properties too, but we'll we'll talk about them. So the main use of the copa or brahmi, uh, first let's talk about its taste. So we're gonna do its taste. What's what does it taste like to y'all? Mm -hmm. Pleasant. It's not bad, right? It's pleasant. It kind of tastes tea like. It kind of tastes mm -hmm. like almost like a little tannic. It almost tastes like a poo air. Tannic. A um, little bit of a swampy smell. I think that's the word we could use, right? Mm -hmm. What are other words we using for that? Sure, was it? I could drink that all day long. We didn't have very much tea, so this is like some, I think, tincture and glycerite mixed in there too, just tincture. Is it more common as a tincture than the tea? No, we just we just ran out of it. We ran out of the tea, so we didn't have much, and it's kind of gone right now. I guess so. For some reason, it's hard to get. Everybody seems to be sold out. So um, a couple things before we even gonna purchase or talk about it is that um, this herb has legendary associations similar to ashwagandha, also very similar to gatu kola. In fact, the, the uses of bacopa and gatu kola are very similar, but they're a little bit different. Um, one of the main medical differences, gatu cola will interact with blood thinners, and bacopa does not. And gatu cola is a better blood vessel tonic, where bacopa does not do that at all. I think bacopa is stronger for the brain and memory than gatu cola by far. People notice it more. Okay. So, but one thing we need to keep in mind is that this is a legendary tonic. This is like what often called the food of the Brahmin, right? The Brahmin would be the historical spiritual leaders or priests or uh, what's the term in yoga, like a guru, right? Like a spiritual teacher would often and still do to this day, often fast eating or drinking only this plant. Um, and it's always been thought of to increase consciousness, increase mental focus, mental alertness, but more so kind of clear the mind of all negativity too. Okay. But the challenge with using it is that this is an aquatic plant that grows in watery, like along springs and creeks. So when we're dealing with aquatic plants, we have to have an extra level of caution because if that water is polluted by any kind of pollution, then the plant's going to be polluted because it's an aquatic plant. You can't not be polluted. Um, and aquatic plants are also just known for sucking up like pollutants in the environment more too. So we want to make sure whatever company we're using has did like some heavy metal testing and also tested for other pollutants and contaminants, which most of the companies that we use have all did that, right? Mm -hmm. Like and all these things. So this is not something we go on Etsy and like buy. <laughs> we don't go on what's the Chinese site, Ali, Ali Bobby, uh -huh. Alibaba. Yeah, we don't buy this on Etsy. We don't buy this on eBay. We just buy this from a known good company. So. The good thing about Bacopa is it works good no matter how you take it. So the dried herb tea is great. That's very pleasant. Capsules of it work great. Um, fresh plant tinctures are the best to me, but also tinctures from the dried plant are good. Uh, Peristar makes a glyceride out of this. That, um, 
I have never known it to not work. So glycerite has worked also very well for this plant. In India, it's really common to sell the fresh juice of it, and people just drink it all the time, kind of like pop at a grocery store. Should be really awesome. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so we could also probably add to this list a sucket. Do you remember what a succus is? Remember what a succus is? Succus is where we juice an herb like cleavers or bacopa, and then we add alcohol to kind of tincture it. So it's kind of like a preserved juice. Mm -hmm. So you can, this plant, bacopa, things in this family are sold at landscaping shops all through the Midwest because. It's used in like aquatic landscaping and ponds and things like that. I don't know. I've actually seen Bacopa Lunari act like mohals and landscaping places. I guess I don't know how polluted the genetics are, or I'm not sure. So it's sold all over and it seems to grow well. If you have a wetland area, it'd be really cool to grow it. It is like a creeping plant, right? <laughs> So kind of like like cleavers, it likes to spread and kind of creep along streams. Um, to some people, that would be the doctrine of signatures for expansive awareness, right? Interconnectedness, group consciousness, maybe would be a word we would use. Okay. So we want to be careful in knowing that it's really, we always do with plants, but especially aquatic plants. You could, I'm sure you could grow this hydroponically. I'm sure you could grow this at home pretty easily. Okay. Okay, so most of the focus of this plan is going to be on the nervous system and the brain. So what's unique about the copa is that it is really good for any kind of inflammation to the nerves. So you have damage to your nerves. From like a trauma or an accident but this is also good when we have damage to nerve tissue from neurological diseases like parkinson's and alzheimer's and ms multiple sclerosis and als right so a lot of these really severe chronic degenerative nerve diseases that are really not fun to experience, the sooner we can get people things like this. Like if you have a family history of that, you should be doing this years before, right? We want to try to help more prevent those things or give them to people when they're in the initial stages. I have seen many times with MRIs to confirm that patients who have taken a lot of Bacopa have actually have their brain scan show their brain lesions actually go away when they have MS, which is pretty spectacular. So usually if you have MS about once a year, you're getting a, an MRI of the brain to look at if the lesions are progressing or not, like damage to your brain, literally, right? Um, and changes to gray matter. And I have seen Bacopa actually many, many, many times within a year's time actually reverse some or all of them in patients. That doesn't mean that all their MS symptoms go away, but it's at least, it's a major victory, right? So I can't stress how important service for like MS and ALS. Are seizures considered, considered like a neurological seizure? Seizures and epilepsy are, this is like an anti-convulsive, so it's specific for seizures also. Okay. So Parkinson's, anytime we have a tremor, so this would be good for epilepsy, um, seizures of any kind, tremors, any kind of tremoring disorder, we would use this for. Or like we've talked about too, when people do have a seizure or an epileptic, episode pretty wiped out afterwards often like the muscles are locked in place and it's exhausting mm -hmm. and it's like just kind of can take days to recover or if people fall when they're having an episode like that can create its own problem so this herb can really help people to like transition or move through that really quick okay 
So anytime there's damages to the brain, we're going to think of Bacopa immediately. This would be traumatic brain injury, people that have concussion brain injury, like athletes, or people that maybe been in accidents. If you give it to that fellow in Louisville, they said that the most recent shooting, they oh. said that he had so many concussions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to remember and have empathy that people with concussions and traumatic brain injury, it changes your personality forever often. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a society, we need to better medically just recognize that too. So anytime there's been damage to the brain, you've had oxygen deprivation because of maybe drowning, near-death experience, <laughs> Strangulation, you know, choked out. Well, um, it also helps sometimes with babies. Yes. Yeah. So babies who have or in the birthing canal for too long and have different problems that can happen with the brain development or head or from oxygen that I have used this or for that to be very specific. Yeah. And it works down the road too, not just when it's acute. Yeah, it works even if it's from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, there's no research on this, but I just knowing this <laughs> a little bit is so good. It's been shown to like slow the progression of inflammation in the brain and other problems to the aging process. It works different than ginkgo for the brain. Remember, ginkgo all works through blood flow to the brain, but copa works more through like the nerves and the nerve tissue. So we have very different remedies there. Okay. Um, so yes, anytime we have a tremor or a twitch or a shake, we would combine this with probably something like Spokane. But this is a nerve calming agent. So really any anxiety, any stress we're going to use this for. But where Bacopa really shines for stress is that this is for people that have <laughs> mental stress, worry, mental anxiety, the mind won't shut off, your brain is overactive, you're always thinking, right? So we also use this for insomnia in people who just wake up thinking all the time, right? They're worrying all the time. Or wake up just almost like in a shock, like all of a sudden thinking about stuff immediately. So it's good for insomnia, but it's not so strong that it sedates people, but it's very helpful for insomnia. But the one point I wanna make is that it's traditional understanding is really critical to know that this herb actually has, uh, remember we talked about in Ayurveda, the, the Hava effect, meaning certain plants just have a very unique effect. This herb affects consciousness and the mind. So it literally calms our mind and can pacify aggression in our mind and strong emotions and strong feelings. Um, for this reason, it's known, it's well documented in ancient books too, that this herb has always been used for mental health issues. People that have depression, bipolar disorder, um, manic disorder, um, hysteria, schizophrenia, bipolar, um, all of these, you know, personality disorders, those things are often from inflammation in the brain, we're learning, right? So we've, we've talked about, we know now that, right, inflammation is one way that the brain is affected. So this is a brain or a nerve anti-inflammatory. Can't stress that enough. Okay. It literally relaxes your mind. It's not as like when you take the copa on a practical level, it's not as calming as like skull cap or passion flower to the whole nervous system, but it really regulates everything beautifully. So anytime we have the mind or the brains affected, we're always going to think of the copa. Okay.
Tourette's. So this includes, yeah, Tourette's. Okay. Um, <laughs> We use this for autism all the time. We use this for vaccine damage to the brain or nerve tissue. This is why it's in our vaccine preventative formula too. Anytime a drug has caused nerve damage or damage to the brain, we would use this. We use this for drug withdrawal because it's going to calm the nerves. It's going to create like a peaceful, it creates like a peaceful state of mind. But it affects the brain in a really unique way too, in that it is, it's been shown to be helpful for memory, concentration, and focus. But more from like that Zen state of mind, right? Where the, the mind is more calm and focused, but it's also like more alert and focused. It doesn't sedate the brain. Right. Can we combine this with drugs for ADD? And should we combine this with drugs for ADD? Yes, because drugs for ADD are, they're drug stimulants, right? They're uppers, they're dangerous okay. drugs, right? That are used all the time and people get benefit from them. But you know, we have that agitates the nervous system that can affect the brain. So Bacopa, in my experience, can really help minimize the side effects of ADD drugs. And it works, they work really well together. So we would use this also for ADD and ADHD. Okay. We would also use this for any type of memory issue across the board. Anytime someone says they have a memory problem, a family history of a memory problem, whether it's from concussions or brain injury, or whether it's from genetics or aging process or inflammation, we're going to use Bacopa for sure. So <laughs> this would be for um, memory, poor memory recall, um, to enhance our cognitive function, like you're going to study for a test, or you have finals week, or you have a really mentally strenuous work event coming up, or um, this herb is not used by athletes enough. But remember, part of athletic performance is just focus. So to me, this is like a really important underutilizer for athletes too. When you want to perform the best you can and be in that kind of focused zen state of mind. But it has also been highly researched to help slow the progression of dementia, memory loss, age-associated memory loss, meaning how people can just lose memory ability as they age naturally, um, and also Alzheimer's. It has also been shown to actually enhance IQ and intelligence scores. Actually pretty well researched in India do this. Meaning it actually can, and in Ayurveda, we say this herb actually enhances your intelligence. Okay. Um, it also has a little bit of some muscle relaxing properties, but I would say that's, that's kind of secondary. So historically, this herb is naturally an herb that would be used for people who want to also relax, meditate, and do relaxation. So this herb can help people enhance meditation or people who just can't calm their mind enough to be able to relax or meditate or sleep. It's this herb. So it's also been used historically for like yoga training, help you really get into your, you know, mind and body deeper. Is it good to take it? Um, combination with other herbs or by it itself. works really great with just about uh, all kinds of herbs. So if you were studying for um, you know, the medical boards, yeah. So would you? Yeah. So that's a good question. So you, you want to mean mean you want to combine it with something for like focus power and calm? Yeah. So for if you want like the ultimate brain tonic for like say you're going to study for a board exam or something. 
we're going to combine Bacopa to like create a calm focus mind uh, and a peaceful mind. And we're going to combine it with something like rosemary that is really stimulates a lot of blood flow to the brain and it's very mentally clearing. So we can think like really fast and sharp and ginkgo. That would be like the holy trinity. Ginkgo increasing blood flow. Ginkgo increases blood flow to the part of our brain associated with focus. So those three together are pretty amazing. Would they be equal amounts of each or? You could use equal amount. Yeah, they're all, yeah, you could do about any kind of combination with those. It combines well with reishi for people who want to have more of like a meditative state of mind. Uh, because of this effect on the brain, I this is not really research, but it's just something I've figured out kind of myself. Um, this is the herb, like triple star, if someone is having brain cancer treatment, which causes, you know, a lot of peripheral damage and it can be very serious. Um, this herb can help people who have had past brain radiation treatment and chemotherapy to brain tumors. And we also give it to people in mega doses during radiation treatment for brain tumors. I've seen it really have really amazing effects to protect the healthy brain tissue. It has actually been shown to also increase memory, and it's been quite research for memory and focus, mm -hmm. I call. Okay. It was, would, you, would you combine it with, like, would that need for, for brain tumors or for brain cancer? You could or? use wood betony for just some of the inflammation, or ashwagandha is really good for brain inflammation or the skull cap. All those things would be pretty helpful. Um, because it does help the brain, I have used this for like, um, the point was brought up really for uh, children that had like traumatic birthing brain injury or were oxygen deprived because the cord was wrapped or something like that. Um, also for children who are failure to thrive, this is a really important plant. Also, people, oh, I forgot to write this. Um, anyone that's had lead poisoning, past, present, or future, because lead poisoning is highly inflammatory and damaging to the brain and nerve tissue, right? That's how come sometimes we know people have it, so it's to exhibit some really weird neurological symptoms. And remember, Omaha is one of the most lead soil contaminated places in America. <laughs> the lead refinery that was right over by Mercy, uh, not Mercy, but um, Michelle, the pistol, right over there. That whole area, huge part of Omaha, is just forever contaminated, right? Right? And if you live in Omaha, you can actually get your soil tested for lead for free and the uh, I don't know if it's the USDA or who does that. Somebody comes out and removes all your soil and drops it off. It's free to Omaha citizens. Um, the children are screened for lead poisoning and that uh, in Omaha. Okay. Remember, you get lead poisoning from just old paint and older houses and all kinds of things. Okay. Okay, there's a little bit of historical use that, that this is sometimes used for like burning urinary pains, like with the UTI cystitis, but it does not treat a urinary infection. It just, it's just like a minor use, secondary use. Okay. Okay, so going back to that failure to thrive, everybody knows what I mean by failure to thrive. This is like a medical term where someone is either their head circumference or they're not charting like they should on a growth chart or they're way, way below. Or people have like mental, um, they're not progressing mentally, cognitively. Um, I've seen quite a few children that have had this for unknown causes, most of them. And um, 
Uh, I mean, I've just seen it sort of do the same thing. Uh, all of those children work themselves out as the earlier described. All of them regained all of their cognitive function. I put most of the emphasis that Makova did most of that together with Dr. Kola. Yeah, I think I told you the one child that yeah, she would come in and her mental faculty were so um, low that um, you know, she would kind of run around and then she would just, this happens often with failure to drive children. She would just stop and just lay her head on the floor on the side and just stare. For about a minute or two, and then she'd kind of like pull out of her and just run away. So it happened every five, ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, yeah, as a parent, you're like, oh, you try that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, this is the reason I can to try to help you out, you know? Um, so it's really has truly created some almost miraculous type things. So, I mean, the good thing about the Pope is it's safe and all that there is no toxic dose. Drink the juice, you know, you can consume really high doses. So, extremely safe for infants, extremely safe for children, extremely safe for elderly, extremely safe for adults. Um, and again, psychologically, it's said we use it for depression, chronic depression. It's not mood uplifting like St. John's or, or saffron. It's, uh, just by its positive influence on the brain and the nervous system, it's, it's helping depression. I don't know exactly how it does it. Okay, so anytime either you're losing focus and concentration, anytime your nerves have been damaged, anytime the brain has inflammation or damage of any kind, anytime we want our mind to feel calm and pristine, we're going to think of Bacopa like the main thing. Okay. It's used some for other like, um, I use it like when people have chronic fatigue syndrome and adrenal fatigue and fibromyalgia and Lyme's disease, where people are having a lot of brain and neurology symptoms. It's also really helpful for that. But it doesn't really have an effect like directly on lines or fibromyalgia, but it's good for the neurological side of it. It's just one of those things that people have those diseases and we're questioning them in our intake, and they say they have neurological symptoms like tremors or nerve pain or numbness or headaches and brain inflammation. And we're going to do this. Okay. And it's also a longevity tonic on top of it all. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to give you a really famous, there's a famous and ancient Ayurvedic formula. Remember these Ayurvedic formulas? A lot of these with these tonic herbs are called rasayanas. Rasayana means like a rejuvenating elixir. Okay. So we're going to decipher this formula. You tell me why this works. Ready? So, cardamom, one part. Okay. I want you to tell me why this is the formula. Black pepper, one part. Low, interesting choice. Two parts. Bacopa, ten parts. That's a really nice ancient formula. So traditionally, this would be made into a tea, or it will be put in hot milk, or cooked in ghee, or you can do all kinds of things where you can roll it into a pill, but this is like the formula. So tell me why this formula, why does this, this is an ancient formula going back like I think maybe over a thousand years. What's, what's the deal with it? Why, it's pretty basic, right? 
This is clearly an Ayurvedic formula and not a Chinese formula. Easy to identify. Why? Because in Ayurveda, they use a lot of really, really hot spices. <laughs> the Chinese, we get really like sensitive about that and we get like, we don't want to over spice or overheat anything. So this is like a classic Ayurveda formula. Remember the principle of formulation in Ayurveda is to treat the disease, number one, and treat digestion, number two. And in Ayurveda, digestion is considered more of like a cold, weak process. So we would add these herbs. But why this formula though? Why does this make sense? A bacopa is clearly a 10 parts. It's the, these are just like catalysts, right? Or assistant herbs. What are they doing? So they're definitely treating digestion. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? I mean, black pepper is like one of the most common Ayurvedic spices, right? Why? Why black pepper? It stimulates hydrochloric acid secretion and then enzymes. Um, it's also anti kapha so it breaks up like congestion. And you can remember how we talked about many moons ago about how in traditional medicine, like often phlegm or mucus can actually is indicative of other blockages inside of our blood vessels or brain or nervous system. So here, one secret thing that these things are doing is they're breaking up any kind of blockages in the digestive system or your blood vessels or your lymphatic system that's clearing this kind of what we call phlegm, right? Also be really good for allergies, which is going to make your head feel really unclear. Flow to me is a really interesting choice because I don't know if you remember when we mentioned this, but when we talked about consciousness, um, awakening herbs, like herbs that are really aromatic often are thought to like awaken the mind or the consciousness, like smelling salts, right? Like when you smell a smelling salt, you instantly like, you can't stop it. So clove is kind of like internal smelling salts, right? It's really opening up. Like when you take clove, you really notice it in your brain kind of instantly. It's like a, a little perk up in his immediately. Cardamom to me is clearly in here because these two are pretty hot. Cardamom's like a little more neutral and it's good for pitta. So here, the cardamom mixed with the black pepper, make sure the black pepper doesn't get like too hot and dry and spicy. That makes sense. Cardamom, though, also remember we found out has nervine mind enhancing properties. It's currently being used to enhance meditation. So that's actually, even though it's an ancient formula, there's a lot of really cool modern ways to look at them. It's good. I would personally do clove at one. I would never do clove at two. That is like, it's just such an intense plan. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we get back today. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry. Maybe we'll drink that Saturday. Cardamom? I just want to cook I don't think we have more of a cook with keto. Okay. Okay. So let me make sure if there's anything else that I got. <clears throat> oh, one of the really cool uses that we haven't really talked about a lot is that in Ayurvedic medicine, there for some reason, this is, I guess it does happen in Chinese medicine a little bit. There's a really a lot of hair oils that are used because that will make your hair return to its normal color or to help your hair grow stronger, faster, if you're losing your hair. A really long history. I don't know how that all came about, but you can go to the Indian grocery store in Omaha and they sell Brahmi hair oil or Bacopa hair oil. So it's one of the most time-honored ways. It's just like a oil you massage into your scalp every night to help you grow. 
grow your hair faster, stronger, thicker. Remember in Chinese medicine, we do Ho Shu Wu to make your hair turn back to its normal color if it's gray. But this is a little different. But also that oil too is used historically in Ayurveda to massage your head and scalp to clarify and clear your mind also. So it has another, you can buy it for your hair, but it has a purpose of regulating your whole brain. Okay. That's about all that I know about Bacopa. Pretty powerful plant. One of my favorite plants. And one of the best things about it is it's just ridiculously safe. So any questions on Bacopa? Just not mine. Just how soon would you see a change? So Bacopa, if you drink like a tea or take a tincture or capsule, you're probably going to feel like a little bit of mind focusing effects fairly quick. Like I already feel it from drinking this. Um, but to like regulate the nervous system or like for anxiety, it's probably going to take a couple of days to kind of feel it. To create this peaceful state of mind that takes over your body, you know, it can take a couple of days. You know, if we're going to do it for something like MS, you know, to get changes, you know, it might take months and months and months to see them on like a like MRI or something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Right. Any other questions on Bacopa? If that was your chance. No, no questions. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Okay, but it's really pleasant. I really, I, know, I forgot how pleasant it's here. I think it transitions to the air. Actually, that was the air kind of taste. By the way, all aquatic plants have a little bit of this swamp. There's like a little light swampiness to the tea. Like all aquatic plants have a little bit of this, like a slight. All that happens is they either get more funky than this. This is about as least funky as it gets. It starts to get. And when we get into the white palm lily that we tasted that grew on you know, the mud, like it tastes really swampy. Okay, should we stop? Mm -hmm. Recording.